Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching the brand new media show today. Today, I have Mr. Andy Wise with us today. And Andy, he's a former TV news reporter and the founder of Consumer Investigator of Andy Wise Choices. And that's a consumer protection and advertising endorsement services. Hello, Andy. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, hi, Brent. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, I know you have some great information to uh, inform us on today. But, you know, first of all, let's, let's, let's talk about what is Andy Wise Choices. Explain that. I'll be happy to. I will. Uh, well, Brent, as you know, I was a television reporter 10 years at WREG News Channel 3 and 10 years uh, for WMC Action News 5 as the exclusive consumer investigator in the market, meaning my job was to protect the bottom dollar and the consumer safety of our viewers, my constituents. I was hired in 97 by that administration at Channel 3 at the time from Jackson, Mississippi to do that very thing. And to the credit of six administrations and two stations, they let me build that brand uh, of consumer advocacy. Uh, at the end of 2017, uh, which corresponded with the end of my last contract, uh, my wife and I became empty nesters and, okay. and we decided to take a risk and have me retire early from TV news, but I didn't want to lose that 20 year consumer protection brand that I built mm -hmm. uh, helping consumers. And I still wanted to help Memphis and Mid-South consumers with the expertise that I have. So I came up with the concept of andywisechoices.com. The simplest way to explain it is it's an Angie's list for Memphis and Mid-South businesses, except there's a difference in the business model. Okay. Angie's, list, Angie's list business model, which is a, which is a national, re, national global business model, is based solely on customer reviews of these businesses, which obviously have their value, but they can be faked and they can be trumped. You know, so, uh, I designed AndyWiseChoices.com with a finite number of categories, you know, accountant, plumber, law firm, uh, general contractor, electricians, service industries that I policed for 20 years as your uh -huh. chief consumer investigator in Memphis. And then I started researching each of those categories for one single business per category, exclusive. Okay. Whom, whom, who meets all of my I'm sorry, Andy, you here? Protection standards, all my customer service standards. And then I offer them endorsement. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm still there. Okay. We faded out a little. Okay. Okay. You want, I'll pick up where I left. I assume you're going to edit this. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. That's um, okay. And categories, each the categories that I represent or endorse, I endorse that business exclusively to that Ellendale, for example. That is the only electrician I will endorse for consumer protection. Okay. Um, okay. I've done the research in that category and I've, I've narrowed it down to, this is the company I would hire to have in my home to do electrical Where do you get work. all of your reviews from, Andy? Uh, I, don't, I, I do my own reviews, but uh, the research I do, I, I research uh, licensure, contractor's licensure or, or as well as Shelby County or DeSoto County, or if it's, or Crittenden County, business licenses, state licenses that are business bureau standards uh, and, and with their accreditation with the BBB or their ratings with the BBB. Uh, I research a length of service. If, if the business has been around a long time, in some cases, multi-generations. In fact, uh, a good example, Choate's HVAC, the, the HVAC company whom I endorse. Okay. From a three-generation family going back to, to the to the 1950s, uh, and also the Choates were consultants on my show since 1997. So many of my clients I've had a 20-year or 20-plus year relationship with because I had vetted them to be worth being on my show to help me protect consumers in those certain categories of issues. Uh, now they are my clients, and I promote them, and they sponsor my consumer protection content that is on AndyWiseChoices.com and on my YouTube channel. Yes, Andy, and you know, I just like the viewers to really understand. I remember, Andy, you did something with, Andy always helping people 
if somebody is ripping like an older elderly people off, they always say, call Andy Wise. We're going to call Andy Wise and he's going to take care of business. He's going to find out what's yeah. going on. Somebody's ripping off an elderly people or even a younger person. If you get Andy right. Wise on the case, Andy used to take care of business. He used to get people money back. If somebody's ripping people off, right. we all used to know he was well known for taking care of the consumers here in the mid south. So right. he was really well known on taking care of people. I really, I really, we, we, we really hate that. That where's Andy Wise? He's not on the TV station anymore and doing consumer investigations anymore. So I knew that well, was your heart. Yes, and, and I don't do specific request visions anymore, but I still write about the consumer issues of the day uh, in my wise advice column. That's my blog that's on andywisesources.com. And I still reveal and look into uh, emerging scams as well as the traditional scams that continue to haunt us and rear their ugly heads every day on my wise warnings blog. And I still get about a half dozen emails a day from people who still think I'm a reporter uh, right. asking for help. I, I introduce them to my site. I explain to them that I no longer do specific investigations like that unless they involve one of my clients. And if it does, I get involved with customer mediation I, and I'm very good at it. Mm -hmm. um, I had 20 years of experience mediating conflict between consumers and, and businesses. So I'm, I'm very effective at that, but I also help them get the resources uh, uh, within our community who can help them right now since I'm not doing specific investigations anymore. But okay. What I want people to understand is I am still a resource for you. And instead of knocking down the bad guys, I'm propping up the good guys in, in the You're service. You're propping up the good guys industry. now. So what I tell people, how, you know, first of all, andywisechoices.com is free. It does not cost anything to use. Okay? Really? It's a, yeah, it's a free resource. You, you, you just go to the website and use it as a resource. Just like and you we would put, I just Bureau. want everybody to know that we're going to put all of your information in the description box oh, down below. Thank you very below. much. Okay. Uh, what I, the way I tell people how to use andywisesources.com, first of all, go to andywisesources.com and on the homepage, you'll see my tabs. To the far right, you'll see uh, wise advice, wise warnings. Those are my continuing blogs that I continue to update. I also share them as content about consumer issues of the day. Almost anything you can think of asking, I've answered it in one of those blogs. Okay, so I let's just make Let me Andy. know and I'll research it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure... Oh. Uh, the, let the viewers understand what are the consumer issues that you will handle for them. Can you just like kind of list the issues so they will understand exactly what you do? It's just okay. I want to make sure people there. understand that I I no longer do I'll, I no longer do custom investigations or or help type stories or problem solvers for people. You okay. can't email me anymore and say, Mr. Wise, I need help getting my social security check, you know, that's not like, no, I don't do that anymore. You know, okay. what, what I, I still write about the general consumer issues and scams of the day. And I'm an information resource uh, for those. Okay. Those so break it, break let's, it down. Tell us what you do. I'll give you an example. Okay. Let's say you're considering getting a home warranty. Okay. You're in the market for a home warranty. You see these commercials for American home shield or first, uh, first American home warranty. And you're like, I think I ought to get a home warranty. But before I do it, let me see what Andy Wise says about home oh, warranties. Oh, okay. You can go to andywisechoices.com. You can search home warranties or you can Google Andy Wise Choices home warranties. The first thing that will pop up is my blog article on home warranties where I tell people never to buy a home warranty. Okay, it's a waste something of money. like it's Better a, Business yeah, yeah. Bureau, but it's Andy Choice Wise's. Okay. Or well, andywisechoices.com, right. Yes. And then as far as the companies whom I endorse, I, I have 31 clients. I've identified 35 categories of sales and service industries whom I policed for 20 years in Memphis. I have filled 31 of those with each with an exclusive business I endorse to that category. Business I would hire uh, that to, be a, to do work at my home. That okay. the business who often consulted on my own show. What mm -hmm. I tell people about that is, if, let's, say you're, um, let's say you're gonna do a bathroom remodel. Okay. okay. You're, you're starting to get estimates from contractors. You can go to my site. And you can see whom I endorse for general contractor, which okay. is Interior Transformations, Hillco Construction out of Memphis. You can go there, you can click on their profile page, and it explains exactly why they are the wise choice for general contractors. I have bullet resumes in each one of them on their, on their consumer protection bona fides, 
their customer service histories. You can, and, and then you can know that I don't have to do research on that company. I can just put it in my estimate pool because Amy's done the homework for me. Now that gives me time to go research other contractors to add to my estimate pool. And I can include the company that Andy endorses along with three or four others who have uh, legitimate consumer uh, contractors licenses whom I've researched with the Tennessee Board for Licensing Contractors online. Uh, they have good business, better business bureau records. I, they have evidence of their work. They have references. And then you put those together. I just, I make your estimate time or your time putting together uh, uh, pot potential companies for your job. I slow it, I speed it up by you speed, giving you, you at, le at least one company that you can include in your estimate pool and don't have to do the research on because I've done the research for you. Okay, so we're talking about what type of uh, 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 companies. I know you said contractors and what you have like department stores. Uh, no, 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 it's it's all, I call them all service related businesses, plumbers. Oh, services, like, okay. People who come to your home to do work, plumbers, contractors, electricians, lawyers, accountants, um, window treatments, window blinds, wi uh, window replacement, flooring, uh, roofers. Okay. Um, um, I'm trying to go through all, <laughs> all the ones that are in my mind. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm electricians. Um, I, I, do, uh, I do endorse principal Toyota as the exclusive uh, wise choice auto dealership because of its community involvement and community okay. partnerships and okay, community yes. service. Uh, so one auto dealership. Um, uh, I'm a, we're about to introduce a new auto mechanic uh, in April. Can't do that yet. April 1st has to come around, but we'll, uh, I will be adting an independent auto mechanic. So how do you get your company? Can, my test. How do you get your companies? Can a company uh, contact you and ask you to endorse them uh, for their yes, recommendation they apply. for their business? Uh, the, yes. The, the, if you go to andywisechoices.com on the homepage and scroll to the bottom of the homepage, there's a section that says, become a wise choice. And okay. You click on that and that explains everything about my endorsements, including the base price, because they are paid endorsements, but also it explains how not just anybody can be one. You know, I've had plenty of people who, I've had plenty of businesses who have applied for categories saying, and when, and when, I, when I tell them, I'm sorry, you, you don't quite meet the standard and, and here's why, they'll say, well, we'll, hell, we'll, we'll pay you twice what you're, you're charging. I said, that's not the point. I said, I, I know what my lifestyle is. I know what, I'm not going to accept income consumers. from somebody just to accept income. Right. Yeah, you have to, you have to meet my standard for this. But at the same time, I mm -hmm. had to record it. I had to create an income stream for me in retirement and, okay. and still maintain my consumer protection brand and a venue to continue to help consumers with, with consumer protection information and scam alerts. That's what andywisechoices.com does. And my, in, my endorsements enable me not only to give people reliable information about services they trust, but also provide me an income stream so I can continue to provide, provide the content that helps consumers. Andy, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's mm -hmm. great. So um, I know your wife, she, you, she's very happy that you retired. May I ask you a personal <laughs> question? Uh, it, it depends <laughs> on how personal it is. <laughs> <laughs> we all wondered what, actually made you retired early what's the reason why I'll, you i just I'll, I'll give you the, the, because the, you were just personal so great you were so great at the there station are, there why? are personal and professional there are personal and professional reasons the personal reasons are we became empty nesters and we wanted to move closer to family uh and the family we wanted to move closer to don't live in memphis so this enabled me to, to to set up an income stream and, and a business that still helps me serve my Memphis constituents, but allows me to move away. Okay, so that was the personal end of it. The professional end of it is I saw by the end of 2017 that not only Memphis, but local TV in general, all the markets were losing their appetite for full-time consumer advocacy reporting. You see, consumer advocates like me, you know, we're one of the more expensive people on the payroll. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but yes. we're doing fewer store. We do fewer store. We do fewer stories uh -huh. um, per month than the general assignment reporters do. Uh -huh. General assignment reporters that you see on TV in Memphis for uh, they turn two stories a day, two completely different stories a day. They're they're busting their tail, running around the mid south to turn two stories for two different newscasts, and they they barely make what a Memphis public school teacher makes. Okay. Uh -huh. People like me, full time investigative reporters. We make what anchors make, okay, which is really good money in Memphis. Yes, and we turn eight 
you know, seven or eight stories a month because we're doing undercover work, we're doing long-term investigations, we're digging through documents. So from a business standpoint, local TV, particularly in a mid-market like Memphis, no longer sees it as cost-effective to pay someone like me six figures uh, to do eight stories a month, no matter how good those stories are and no matter how much immediate benefit they give consumers. So I saw the writing on the wall that I wasn't going to be receiving the resources I need, full-time photographer, full-time producer, you know, uh, freedom to do true investigative work anymore in a mid-market like Memphis. And I had no desire to, to go to a higher market and, and to do television if there wasn't going to be a commitment to allow full-time consumer advocacy that six administrations in Memphis did for me in two stations. So I decided it's perfect timing. My last contract's coming up in 17. My kids are leaving the ha or flying the coop. <laughs> we can be closer to families, some of whom need my help in terms of assistance right. uh, for their, because they're getting older or whatever it may be. Right. And I can start this resource that is mine and mine alone that mm -hmm. no one can change. And I can now ethically support businesses who meet my standards in a way that not only provides immediate benefit to consumers, but also provides me an income stream. Yes. Okay. What's one of your most memorable stories at the station that you will never, ever forget? Well, the, the, my last week in TV at, at Channel 5, the, the week before Christmas in 2017, we did a whole Goodbye Andy series of reports. We ended it with the most important story I ever did, which was actually with Channel 3 in 2000. Okay. Um, I had, there was a family of four. Uh, they lived in Bartlett. The father was a, was a cook at a, at a restaurant and the, the wife was a, a, a waitress. And they had four children, four little <laughs> girls. Their youngest, Alice, was born with a condition called craniosynostosis. When we are born, our, our skulls are malleable to get us through our mom's birth canal. <laughs> that, got, that was God's design for us. When, you, when a baby is born with craniosynostosis, the baby's skull is already born fused. The skull is already in place, mm -hmm. but the brain is still growing. So when I met Alice, she was four months old. Uh, I, was a, I was 29, 30 years old uh, in the year 2000. And at four months old, her forehead was already starting to protrude over her eye sockets because her brain was growing against her skull and it was pushing her skull against her skin. Okay. And the family was on 10 care at the time and they consulted a plastic surgeon and the plastic surgeon who agreed to talk to me and did an interview at the time said, Alice is facing one of three things. She's either going to have brain damage from the, from the pressure going of her brain against the, the, the pre-fused skull. She was gonna go blind because of the pressure on her optic nerve from the skull or she was gonna die uh, from brain hemorrh hemorrhaging. All three unacceptable options, un unacceptable conclusions. Yeah. But TenCare, the state-funded insurance, would not pay for her surgery because they considered it to be a cosmetic surgery, like, mm -hmm. like fake breasts or something. You know, it, it was completely bizarre. And they were desperate um, because they, did, they, they didn't want to wait any longer for fear of any kind of permanent damage that could be done to Alice. So I did a series of reports and I got on it and I, I was pretty aggressive with the state insurance. And then I got it, I, I was able to get my hands on the terms and condition of 10 cares coverage. And sure enough, craniosynostosis was covered in that policy. So they were denying what's what's in their what's in their own documentation. We hammered them and we hammered them and we hammered them till they finally said, Andy, enough. We will pay for the surgery. We will That's take care of Alice. We will do great that. story. So I got great her story. surgery. And so that, that last day, my last day on the job ever, um, I had told my executive producer that this is, this is the most important story I've, I've ever done. I said, the family and I kept in contact for a few years after that, but like, like life is, we move along, we have families, families grow. I said, I would like to try to find them and have a reunion for this last right. story. Right. I found them. They, okay. they were in Tipton County. Okay. And Alice at the time... At, in 17, Alice was a freshman at U of M. Wow. So her mom and dad, uh, her mom's now an accountant for a, a large firm in, uh, in Memphis. Dad's a long haul truck driver. 
and then she, the three of them came and met me at Cancer Survivors Park there right by uh, uh, Southern and Perkins. Uh-huh. Yes. And, we, and, and you can still, you can look the story up if you search you know, Goodbye Andy, the story that made his career. That's, if you, you go back, you'll, and so I got to see Alice for the first time in 19 years or 17 years at the time. 17 years. No, it was 19 because it was, it was, it was 98 or 99 when that story was or 2000. It was very emotional, and she said so many sweet things, and that, and then to the point, including the fact that she may not be alive today if it wasn't right. for the work I did you on that story. You saved her so, life. So I, I tell people all the time, if, 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 if I stopped there in 99 or 2000 and stopped with that story, I would have made my career. Uh, oh, because Andy. of ensuring, and now she, she just had her first child. She got married a, a couple years later, she mm-hmm. just had her first child, so I have a legacy with her children. Okay. Uh, because she because it was uncertain whether she would be able to survive herself, much less ever get married and have children. Okay. So that's my proudest moment in TV. Andy, great, great job. See, I told everybody <laughs> Andy is a good man. He's a good man. He always used to take care of business for people. He always helped people, and just a great man. Very awesome. I appreciate and, that. I try. I try my best. I don't always do my best. <laughs> yeah. So what's one of the scariest moments you ever had at the station? Well, I mean, I, I, was, I, was in a, I was in a big fight with a guy who had tried to kill a police officer. Uh, this, this particular person was an habitual DUI offender. He was a registered sex offender and he was on his ninth DUI when Memphis police chased him uh, to uh, Whitten Road and I-40 on the North Loop. And one of those police officers was Ray Shadowan, a motorcycle officer whose whole life ambition since he was a little boy was to be a motorcycle cop. Okay. He, and he, he fulfilled his dream. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was one of the patrols pursuing this guy. Well, they had the guy trapped and they, they turned on, he turned on them and rammed them, rammed into uh, Officer Shadowan, shattered his leg, destroyed his career. Uh, the career he spent in a lifetime getting to. We found out that the reason this guy was on his ninth DUI or allowed to be out to be on his ninth DUI is the court system, uh, even by the admission of the administrative judge at the time, which was Shelby County uh, Judge Anthony Johnson, who's now Mm -hmm. passed away. Judge Johnson even said, we screwed up. Each of these times he was released in violation of the Tennessee bond statutes, which spelled out specifically when a suspect or a defendant can be released on bond. Each time he violated, he he never met any of those terms. And each time the court failed the community and now they failed officer Shadowan. So um, they arrested, they finally got control of this guy. We started doing the story. They, he, he was released on bond when he should not have. And that, that was another part of the story. It's like, and then he, he stupidly showed up for court on two months later. He should have okay. been in Alaska. You know, if he had any sense, he would not have come back. And he comes back. And remember, I've already done four or five stories. So the judges on the, on, the, on, the, on the bench right now should be aware of the history of my story now and this guy's history because he's practically a celebrity now with all the stories. Right. Well, he shows up and the judge asks him, the judge asks him do, you, do you have an attorney? And he goes, no, Your Honor, I don't. He says, well come back in two weeks with an attorney and he lets him go again. So much to the chagrin of me and my crew and, and, the, and the prosecutor, well, the prosecutor pulls me aside and says, follow him outside because if you can catch him leaving by himself, that's a violation of the bond statute because he should not be driving because he's an habitual DUI. So we, we, we follow him and, and we're going after him and he starts running and he runs all the way down Poplar heading east to the old weights and measures uh, building there at, at Poplar and Hill near the, near the uh, uh, Union Mission. And we're so Andy, after him. you actually was running. Well, I was you running after was him. Running. And my, and my, photographer's run, my photographer's running after us, but he's got a 40 pound camera on his shoulder. So he's, trying, he's having a hard time pick, keeping up. So we turn and when I turn, the suspect turns to me and he doesn't see my photographer because the photographer's struggling to keep up with the heavy equipment. And so he comes after me and he starts pushing me and pushing me and I, I try to resist. And he, and he finally, I finally said, you know, sir, I said, you can, you can run all the way to Lakeland if you want, but I'm gonna follow you because 
I'm, not, I'm done asking you questions, but I'm going to follow you and see how you leave. And then he spit in my face and then it was on. We were fighting right there in the middle of Hill, Hill Street. Oh <laughs> my goodness. My, my, my photographer show finally catches up. He's rolling to document this, but he's also trying to protect me at the same time. And little did I know there was an auto body shop there that had a surveillance camera that recorded the whole thing. And you know what, case. Andy? I remember that. I think it was a fence. It wasn't a fence over there because it seemed like you did something. And I yes. said, oh, my God, poor Andy. Because you was like, I know you were very <laughs> mad and upset. Your face was red. <laughs> I remember that yes, story. That was, that, was, it was, that was 2007. It was right before I left Channel 3 for Channel 5. And I, I had to go to the hospital for a few stitches, but I had him beat up pretty good. And um, I was saying, poor his, Andy. His girlfriend picked him up, so he did leave without violating the bond statute, but we had a lot of physical exertion to get to that conclusion. But he ultimately uh, was tried and convicted not only for what he did to the officer, but also for what for the what assault he did. he did on me. Yes. But he, but he only served about eight years, so. Okay, yeah, that the, the, was the, really the, scary. The, I, remember, the system, I remember that, Andy. Yeah, the system, yeah, the system continued to fail our community in spite of all the work I did there. So yes, and that's that a was bad, my scariest time. That's a bad thing. Andy, um, I have a question. Uh, <clears throat> it's a consumer. Okay. They wanted me to ask you to touch bases on the three credit bureaus because okay. they have a lot of issues with the bureau on just okay. putting things, putting things on their credit report. Right. And and they said, tell ex Andy to touch bases on the three credit bureaus because they're really upset with them. Okay, I understand. Uh, unfortunately, they're, they're the only bureaus we got. <laughs> and they're the bureaus that manage our credit, so we have to do work with them. But for those of you who are watching who don't know who the three credit bureaus are, they're Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And under federal law, you have a right as an American citizen to get one free credit report from each of those uh, bureaus to see whether there's any uh, false accounts on there or uh, things that can affect your debt to credit ratio on your credit report. The way you, you can go to one site and one site only to get all three reports instantly for free. And that is annualcreditreport.com. Annualcreditreport.com. That is the only safe, secure, and trustworthy site it was set up by Congress as an act of federal law to be a one-stop uh, clearinghouse for Americans to get their credit reports from all three bureaus. And it doesn't, and you're allowed one free one each year. It doesn't cost you anything. What I tell consumers to do is once a year, <laughs> get a report from each of those. They, they should match in terms of the same accounts and everything. And if there is a account you don't recognize, immediately dispute it with the credit bureau, okay? Now, it may take some time to get in, getting through to them, but you use the call service number that's on there or follow the online instructions to do it. I've done it before. I ha I've never had it. I, I, know, I know some people have difficulties with the bureau. I've never had problems with it. It has nothing to do with who I am. The bureau doesn't know me from anybody. It takes uh, 30 days. I, it takes 30 days also, right, for a dispute? Hello? Hello? You there, Andy? Can, did you lose me? Yeah, I'm still there. Can you see okay. me? Can you hear me? We're, we're I'm back. I'm still there? Yes. Okay. Okay. That, uh, it, does, it can take as long as 30 days uh, to, to get a dispute handled, but it doesn't always take just 30, doesn't always take 30 days. It can be quicker. Here's, here's a good example. They need to change with, that. They need to change that. Well, well, that's because that, that's in place because of the demand. But yes, that, that certainly should be quicker. But I've had experiences where I've disputed charges on my or, or things that are on my, my account. It, yes. it didn't take it didn't take 30 days. It took two or three. Okay. Uh, here's an example. Here's an example from my own experience. OK. Um, I uh, I initially told people never get a credit monitoring service like LifeLock or anything like that because it's a waste of money. It's something you can do yourself. So it's not I good to my, get those. It's not good to. No, to I, well, no uh, I, I, I've since changed my mind over the last 10 or 15 years because all three of the bureaus have their own monitoring services now. I mm -hmm. do recommend you having a, a credit monitoring service that is sponsored or backed 
by one of the bureaus themselves because they are the information repository anyway. I, I gave that a shot. I, 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 I don't, I'm not on it anymore because I do my own credit report checking, but I did for a while, I was under Experian's credit monitoring service. That's about and 1999 or 29.99. Yes, that's right. And I, I, gave, I, I tried it for a year and it worked for me and, and it worked quickly. And what happened was there was a Discover account that was unexplained on one of my credit reports. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and initially I thought this is a fraud. Someone has stolen my identity and, and, got, and opened a Discover account on it. But I looked close, more closely to it. The person to whom the card belonged actually had my full legal name Happens but, the person's, but the person's address was on Chimney Rock Boulevard in Cordova. Now, I, I, the 20 years plus that I lived in Memphis, I lived in Cordova. So what I was able to, to determine was with the help of the monitoring service, because I would, not, I, I would not have known about it until the next year when I pulled my reports again. But because the monitoring service sent me, hey, there's something weird here, okay? Uh -huh. Is, and we send you the alert to, 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 to Equifax's credit. They caught it and sent it to me. I was able to research it immediately, determine that this was just a mistake by Discover because they thought that Andy Wise was this Andy Wise. Right. And they, and they put it on my account. Mm -hmm. Once I was able to do that and, and go directly to Experian and also to Discover with the information that I had, thanks to the credit monitoring service, they had it, they had it fixed in three days. It was gone. Mm -hmm. Not yes. 30 Three, three days. So yes. um, that's that's where a credit monitoring service that is backed by one of the bureaus itself, not LifeLock, not a third party, but by one of the bureaus themselves. So you would recommend to you would recommend for the consumers really to to do that if they're not going to really take if, care of if, the monitoring if, themselves. If, yeah, yeah. If you if you're not disciplined enough to once a year check your report, you know. And, you, and you're willing to pay the $19.99 a month or whatever the going charge whatever. is to where they regularly check it for you, then by all means, you should do that as long as it is a credit monitoring service that is sponsored or backed by Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion. That's great. You know, the uh, person said that, that, you know, they were trying to get approved for a house. And uh, every time that they had things popping up on their credit report that wasn't them. So it was causing them not able to get their home because right. the credit bureau constantly keep putting accounts under their name that's not them. Right. And it takes 30 days and that house is gone. So right. they're losing out and that's not good. And I, I told them that, yes, that's a great question for Andy because the credit bureau- That is a great question. Yes. Yeah, the credit right. bureau is is making people stay down. It's not bringing them up. So it need to be a right. reconstruction, a reconstruction with the three credit bureaus. Yeah, assuming that the person who is asking the question is telling the story accurately, uh, that is a that is a mistake for which they have a legal remedy. I mean, if they if they had the money to do it, they could sue that bureau for inaccurately portraying their debt to credit ratio and costing them the opportunity to buy a house. But but then again, well, they are able to that, sue that involves they, hiring a they, lawyer. They are able to sue them because of the inaccuracy on their report. Yes, they, they have every right to do that. Uh, under the fir uh, first of all, you can sue for anything yeah. if you're willing to pay a lawyer to do it. But the Fair Credit Reporting Act, uh, the, 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 the federal Fair Credit Reporting Act uh, allows uh, for redress of consumers who have been wronged by the, the credit uh, bureaus by a mistake of the bureaus. Um, so there is, there is legal remedy to do that. Um, what, what, your, what your fan who's asked a question might consider mm -hmm. is talking to a lawyer about the possibility of seeking redress for that on a contingency basis, which means you don't pay the lawyer unless you win, okay? Some lawyers do, do represent on a contingency basis, some don't. But there are, in the community of Memphis, there are many, many attorneys who do uh, represent clients in situations like this on a contingency basis uh, if they think it's an open and shut case. Yes, okay. So Andy, let's 
you know, with the job, the way the jobs are nowadays, a lot of people credit if, because a lot of people not able to make their payments because they had no income. So that's the reason right. why I said that the three credit bureaus need to come up on a reconstruction to help the consumers get back on their feet. That's what I think. I personally well, I believe think, that. I think, I think the, the way the bureaus operate could be more efficient. I don't have an answer for how that would be. Um, the three bureau system should work uh, the, way it's, the way it's designed. But you know, we've already had a situation where, if you remember, uh, Equifax was breached. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Putting, putting putting millions of Americans uh, uh, credit and identity information at risk. That was a huge. Now the bureau has since uh, gone to great lengths to to secure. Uh, but the problem is that's the only system we have in terms of a repository for our credit uh, or for our credit reports, not our credit, but reporting of our credits of our credit status. So. Um, but yes, uh, like anything, it, it stands to be improved. Um, I don't have an idea or, or a solution to how the bureaus could be made better. Okay, and another question. How, yeah. long, how long can something stay on your credit report? Is it seven years uh, or 10 years? Uh, it, it's typically seven years, but if it's, in, if it's inaccurate, it shouldn't be on there any longer than it has to be. It should be able to be removed. Now, one thing I do tell people is that if you have closed your account, let's, let's say you paid off an account and you don't intend to, intend to use it. People, uh, the conventional wisdom is I need to contact the, the I need to contact the, the bureau and have this finished account removed. That's not what I recommend. I tell people don't close those accounts. Leave okay. them open on, on, leave them open and leave it zero on your, because what that does is that helps your debt to credit ratio. Okay, it, it shows the bureaus that oh look they're they're not act they're not using that credit. Mm -hmm. The credit is there, mm -hmm. and that will often help increase your debt to credit ratio as well as your credit score. And that will also that and when when you increase your debt to credit ratio and your credit score, that helps you get a, a better chance of getting a good deal on a on a car finance on, on a mortgage. Mortgage so right. Don't don't close the accounts that you pay off. Uh, uh, if you if you don't intend to use them, just don't use them. Leave them on your credit report. That'll help often help your debt to credit ratio and improve your credit score. Thank you so much, Andy. Some really great informative information today. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> now we're going to put all of Andy information down in the description box, and if you have any questions or anything for him, you can contact him on that yes. link. And Andy, anything yes. else you want to say to the viewers today? Anything? I really appreciate well, you. Uh, well, I, I appreciate you allowing me this forum to talk. And you can go to andywisechoices.com anytime. It's free, not only to read my blog, but to research the companies whom I endorse exclusively to their categories. You can email me anytime. My email address is andy at andywisechoices.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have to the best of my ability. Thank you, Andy. And always people, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe to the show, hit subscribe and thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Bye, Andy. Bye, Bren, thank you again. You're welcome.